first part of a three-part series, we're going to talk about group one al alkali metals. Now, group one metals are also known as alkali metals. And all group one metals have one electron on its valence shell. And when group one elements are exposed to oxygen or water, it forms oxides and hydroxides that will dissolve in water to form alkaline. So an example that's given is sodium hydroxide and it dissociates or iron dissociates into sodium and hydroxide in water. And this hydroxide is the basis of the alkalinity of that water solution. Now Group 1 elements also tend to be very reactive. And so what we need to do in order to contain it from being spontaneously, contain it from spontaneously reacting with the air about anything, the air, for example, is that we store the group 1 metals in oil. Not your regular cooking oil, oh no, because that's kind of, well, you can't kind of do that, but our regular cooking oil still got some uh, water inside sometimes yeah so what we do is that we store that in silicon oil not silicone oil but silicon oil okay now the thing about group one elements like all metals it will corrode and so when exposed in air group one elements will quickly very quickly tarnish and because of the oxide layer that's formed so when you cut a fresh slice of group one elements, when you cut a fresh slice of it, you will see that you will see a very silvery, shiny surface. And then leave it out for a few moments, boom, dark and gray. Also, group one elements, when come in contact with water, what's gonna happen to it is that it's gonna react really quickly. And sometimes, the group one elements that are lower down in the group may explode. Boom! Now, which of the group one elements tend to be very reactive? Well, it starts getting very reactive from potassium downwards. Potassium, rubidium, cesium, they all may and can spontaneously react and burst into flames in the air. Whoa! That's crazy. What about francium? Well, that's radioactive, so we don't count that in. So how are alkali metals similar to other types of metals? How are they similar? Well, like all metals, alkali metals are good heat and electrical conductors. This is, ooh, feel the heat. Yeah, very good. That's what they're good at. Also, alkali metals tend to have very high boiling points. To vaporize metal, whoa, you need a lot of energy and heat. So yeah. That's very, very high. And like all metals, when you have a fresh cut surface, it's very silvery, shiny, bling, bling, and all that stuff. And like almost all group one, uh, uh, almost all metals, yeah, well, I guess all metals, it loses electrons to become, to form noble gas configurations it loses electrons to form noble gas configurations when it forms an ionic compound, when it forms to become an ionic compound. Right. So how are alkali metals different from other metals? Well, group one metals tend to be very, very soft. It's so easy to cut through those metals. You can't even use a butter knife. Whoa, imagine that, a butter knife? The thing that you cut butter with, and even if butter is harder to cut, uh, I mean, cold butter is harder to cut, right? So, bam, alkali metals are easy to cut. It has a very low melting point. Why? Well, because of the weak electrostatic forces of attraction between the metallic ions in that bond, in that metallic bond. So, the weak forces of attraction due to the one lone delocalized electron constitutes 
and contributes to the low melting point and the softness of alkaline metals. Alkaline metals also have very low density. That means there's not a lot of boom stuff packed in a space of volume. So they tend to float on water. Whoa, metals floating on water? Mind blown, but it does. And also, group one metals, because of its weak electrostatic forces between the metallic ions in that element, also makes group one elements very extremely malleable. You can shape it, shape it really easily, and it has very little strength.